10. Killed by Alec Baldwin Not long ago, Alec Baldwin was filming for a new movie called Rust at the Bonanza Creek Ranch just outside Santa Fe in New Mexico, and a woman was killed. Actually, two crew members were sent to the hospital, and one of them died. Deputies were dispatched to a 911 call at the ranch after an accident with a prop firearm. The prop had been in the hands of Alec Baldwin, who was told that everything was good to go. The gun was only supposed to fire blanks, but when he pulled the trigger, he killed the director of photography and wounded the director. Even with the director of photography being airlifted to the University of New Mexico Hospital, she still didn't make it. Her name was Helena Hutchins, 42 years old. And even though she wasn't technically an actress, this just goes to show how dangerous it can be anywhere near a film set. Even if you're not an actress, you can still apparently take a bullet from Alec Baldwin. The police are currently investigating the incident, trying to determine whether it was truly an accident or something more nefarious. And while no charges have been formally brought up yet against Baldwin, if things don't go his way, he could be booked for murder. 9. Captain America Murderer Molly Fitzgerald had a small role in the 2011 movie Captain America, The First Avenger but it was the last major movie that she will ever star in, seeing as how she has just been charged with murdering her mother. Here are the gruesome details that we know about. 68-year-old Patricia Fitzgerald was discovered dead inside her house in Kansas on December 20th, 2019. 11 days later, her daughter was arrested in connection to the death. According to a court report, Molly had called the police just shy of 12 o'clock in the afternoon to say that she had killed her mom in self-defense. When the police responded to the call, they found Patricia dead on the floor in a pool of blood with a knife stuck in her back. The excuse of self-defense very quickly went out the window. An autopsy revealed that Patricia had sustained four stab wounds to her back and had defensive wounds on her hands. In other words, the evidence was clear that the daughter attacked the mother in a violent fit of rage and stabbed her until she stopped squirming. And in a bizarre turn of events, Molly was ruled incompetent to stand trial and has since been sent to a mental hospital. Her mental state will be re-reviewed every three months until she can finally stand trial for murder. 7. Drunk Pocahontas The star of Pocahontas, the animated Disney movie from 1995, has been arrested twice in just three days for being a drunken maniac. Yes, Pocahontas has a drinking problem. Her real name is Irene Bedard, now 53 years old. The first time she was arrested recently was at her ex-husband's house in Ohio where she was causing a domestic violence situation. When the police arrived, Pocahontas had a belt in her hand and exclaimed, Oh look, they sent the white man to come get me. When the police got near her, the woman smelled like a brewery. She couldn't stand up straight, she had problems speaking, and was just an overall mess. When the police questioned her ex-husband, he claimed that she had arrived out of nowhere, forced her way in, and then started kicking people. The police took her to jail and charged her with domestic violence and resisting arrest. She posted bond and then was arrested again just a few days later for harassing the front desk clerk of a hotel. The police were called because a drunk and combative woman refused to leave the lobby. It took several officers to get her handcuffed and back to the station. How do you feel about this iconic Disney actress having a raging drinking problem and continuously being hauled off to jail? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 5. Scooter Hit and Run Lisa Baines, an actress that appeared in the movie Gone Girl, died after a brutal hit and run accident. 
But it wasn't a car that ran her over. It was a scooter. This happened in New York City when Lisa was hit by a person driving an electric scooter on the Upper West Side of Manhattan near the Lincoln Center. She was crossing the street when the lunatic on the scooter came cruising along and knocked her off her feet. She fell down and hit her head so hard that she had to be sent to the Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital, where doctors say she suffered a traumatic brain injury. She was unable to recover from this injury and passed away. Throughout her life, Lisa Baines appeared in over 80 roles on TV and film. She probably would have appeared in many more if it hadn't been for Brian Boyd, the 26-year-old man who killed her. He's been arrested and charged with leaving the scene of an accident, an accident that resulted in death. He's also being charged with failure to yield to a pedestrian. He drove his scooter straight through a red light, which is exactly how he killed Lisa Baines. 3. Eerie Similarities In 2020, the independent horror movie From the Dark featured the actress Tucker Moore Reed. She played a woman who had just killed a man while saying it was self-defense. The role turned out to be weirdly similar to something that happened to Tucker in real life. In reality, she actually killed her uncle, then told the authorities it was self-defense. To understand the whole story, we need to back it up to at least 2010. It was in this year that Tucker alleged she was viciously assaulted by her boyfriend while studying at the University of Southern California to major in drama. Nothing ever came of it, and she was so mad that she wrote about the incident in her blog, posting his real name and his picture. She had a libel suit filed against him, and it was a big nightmare. From then on, she got very into activism. She wrote for the Huffington Post, for xojane.com, and even sometimes for Cosmopolitan. But as it turned out, she had some serious problems. In July of 2016, she killed her uncle during a family dispute. She tried to shrug off the charges saying that she had simply been defending herself. But the police investigation revealed that she had shot her uncle in the chest, maliciously and with intent. She'll now be spending the next six years in jail. 2. College Bribery Lori Loughlin, the actress who played Aunt Becky in Full House, got in trouble a few years ago in a college admission scandal. She and her husband, the fashion designer Mosimo Giannulli, were charged with bribing college officials so they would enroll their two daughters in the University of Southern California. The couple paid $500,000 for their enrollment. They paid all this money because their kids didn't have the natural credits to get into the school on their own. But as we know now, the scheme backfired. They got caught. Lori Laughlin got two months in jail, had to pay a fine of $150,000, and had to do 150 hours of community service. Her husband served five months in jail, had to pay $250,000, and had to do 250 hours of community service. 1. The Brazilian Voice Actress Brazilian voice actress Christiane Luiz, known for her small roles in TV shows like The Simpsons, as well as video game characters in things like Overwatch, Halo, and League of Legends, was killed. According to Brazilian police, a man named Vasconcelos de Costa was robbing the actress at the time of her murder. He had broken into her house then cut her throat with a broken chalice. Not knowing what to do, he employed his mother to help cover up the crime. When police searched the murderer's home, they discovered some of Christian's belongings. Police learned that Vasconcelos and his mother had kept the woman's body in their house for two days before they statched it. After they hid the body, it took police three days to find her. The motive for the killing is still under investigation. The police believe the murderer was somehow trying to secure Christian's inheritance, but they have not figured out any kind of plan for how he would do it. 
It's a really bizarre case especially since the pair had known each other for years. They met at the same psychiatric clinic and became friends. During their friendship, Vasconcelos had the idea to kill the woman and then somehow steal all of her money. But everything backfired, he got busted, and he's now looking at spending the rest of his life in jail. Number 10. No More Hands Margarita Grachova was married to a very evil man. Her marriage ended in a horrifying display of violence. Her extremely abusive husband kidnapped her, then chopped off both her hands with an axe. It happened in December of 2017. Her husband at the time, Dmitry Grachov, drove her to an isolated part of a forest near their home in St. Petersburg, Russia. He then beat her with the blunt end of an axe delivering over 40 blows across her body and leaving her half dead. As if beating her senseless wasn't enough, he then hacked off both her hands, leaving her horribly disfigured for the rest of her life. The only good thing was that it was cold outside. Her bones were pulverized and her flesh was ripped apart, but the cold kept her body and one of her severed hands well preserved. Doctors were miraculously able to reattach one of them although she's not able to do much with it. These days, Margarita has a prosthetic on the end of her right arm that allows her to grab objects and make some subtle movements. Her husband, now ex-husband, is sitting in jail for the next 14 years, which most believe isn't long enough. Since the attack, Margarita has dedicated her life to protecting victims of domestic violence in Russia. She's even gotten herself a program on Russian TV to help bring the horrendous reality of what these evil men do into the spotlight. Number 9. Stone Cold Florida Killer Robert Kessler was arrested on drug charges, but now he's facing an additional charge of second-degree murder, as well as a charge for the abuse of a dead human body. His victim was identified as Stephanie Krohn Overholtz, 47 years old. Parts of her body were discovered in November by fishermen in McKay Bay. The police couldn't identify her because she was chopped into pieces. They had to post a picture of a tattoo on one of the body parts, which was ultimately identified by Stephanie's family. Investigators learned Stephanie had been living with Robert Kessler. According to what Robert told investigators, they met at a McDonald's and he offered her a place to stay at his house, but he denied having anything to do with her death. He told police he'd previously asked her to leave and didn't know where she went yet they found her blood all over his house. Police believe he killed her, chopped her body up, and then dumped it in the bay. But they haven't been able to come up with a motive for the evil killing. What we do know is that Robert Kessler has been a criminal all his life. He's faced criminal charges on at least 40 occasions since 1986. He's also been in prison at least four times. You have to be a real sick person to invite a desperate woman to your home as a safe place to stay, only to cut her up into pieces. Number 8. Family Massacre In March of 1992, a brutal triple murder was discovered in the Texas city of Kerrville. The victims were Clayton Kenny, his wife Juliana Kenny, and her daughter Adrienne Arnaud. All of them were found beaten and stabbed. The murders had taken place as the family was eating their dinner. There was a bloody knife on the table. Juliana still had a spoon in her hand, and there was blood all over the food from where their throats had been slit. It was terrible. But the cops didn't immediately know what happened. There was no sign of forced entry. There were blood tracks on the carpet, and there were car tracks outside from where the killer had parked. The only thing of value missing was a rare spoon collection. The man investigating the killings was Joe Davis of the Texas Rangers. He believed somebody had a grudge against the family, but he didn't know who. He and his team looked at several suspects, but couldn't get enough evidence against any of them. Three weeks into the case, they discovered a fingerprint, but they didn't get any matches. It was nearly a year later that they got a tip over the phone suggesting a man named James Steiner was responsible. He was at the local state hospital seeking mental health treatment. According to the phone call, he had admitted to one of the employees 
that he had recently killed three people. Investigators learned Clayton had hired him a year earlier to take care of his wife one weekend at their house. The police went and arrested him, and he admitted to murdering the entire family because he needed money for drugs. Yet all he got away with was a measly $25, which he used to buy some pot. The spoons had turned out to be useless. In the end, this evil man was sentenced to death and killed in 2003 by lethal injection. Number 7. The Deranged Pianist Zachary Hughes may have gone to the most prestigious music school in the nation, but even with all his talent, he still turned out to be an evil villain. He was a concert pianist who once said he was on a mission to fill the world with music, but that mission ended abruptly when he stabbed a woman to death in South Carolina. Zachary was only 29 years old when he went to the dark side. His victim was a 41-year-old veterinary technician named Christina Parcell, who loved puppies. Her corpse was discovered in her home in Greer on October 15th, two days after she was killed. She was found with several sharp force injuries. Zachary had butchered her like a monster. But this case involves several bad characters, and it's actually rather confusing. Christina's fiancé, Bradley Post, was arrested before her death on charges of third-degree exploitation of a minor. This was a very bad dude who was found with extremely inappropriate videos of minors in his possession. He had produced the material himself on at least five instances for redistribution. As of right now, police have no idea where Zachary fits into all of this. We have a predator who was supposed to be married to Christina and then a trained musician who spent his spare time dressing up like the Lord of the Rings characters accused of murder. Then there's Bradley's friend, John Mello, who was his accomplice in distributing the illegal videos. It's unclear whether Christina knew about any of this, or if Zachary was connected to the two perverts. What do you think is going on in this case? How are all these evil men connected to a seemingly innocent veterinarian? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Number 6. Severing Ties In the southwestern city of Avaz in Iran, Mona Haydari was decapitated by her husband and her brother-in-law in a case that shocked the whole country. But it gets even more shocking. A viral video swept across the internet of Mona's husband holding his 17-year-old wife's head in the street. He allegedly discovered she had been cheating on him, and so he cut off her head and showed it to the entire world. Iranian police officers have arrested two men in connection with the killing. Iran's vice president for women's affairs has called on parliament to take drastic, urgent measures to raise awareness of this kind of spousal abuse. In fact, it erupted the whole country with people demanding social and legal reforms. Obviously, there's something very wrong when a man can cut the head of his wife and then display it proudly like a trophy in the street. This guy is still living in 1327. Still, nothing changed the fact that this was an evil act perpetrated by an evil man with the help of his evil brother. Number 5. Jealous and Evil Michael Rawl really thought he could get away with killing his ex-partner by convincing the police she stabbed herself in the back. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. Michael attacked his ex-girlfriend Charlotte Huggins at her aunt's house in East London on January 1st. Just days before the attack, Charlotte had an extremely disturbing incident with the man. She accused him of being a lunatic and holding a knife to her stomach. The Crown Prosecution Service is now saying this was no freak accident, but a deliberate attack by a deranged and jealous man. On New Year's Eve, Charlotte went to a bar to celebrate. She went home with a friend at around 2 o'clock in the morning. That was when Michael showed up. When he saw Charlotte with another man, he blew up in a fit of rage. He plunged a knife into her back, killing her right there on the spot. And to try to shrug the blame off, when the police arrested him, he said she did it herself. Not for a second did the police believe him. Michael has since been charged with murder. Number 4. A Deal with the Devil Danielle Hussein was 19 years old when he attacked Nicole Smallman and Bibba Henry as they walked through a park in London, England. He stabbed Bibba eight times and Nicole 28 times. 
they were out celebrating Biba's birthday and had decided to take a shortcut through the Friant Country Park. Neither had ever imagined in their wildest dreams that they would be confronted by a maniac with a knife. Anyone who does this kind of thing is obviously evil, but Danielle was a special kind of evil. According to prosecutors, he killed the women as sacrifices so that he could win the lottery. He had made a deal with a demon in his own mind that if he sacrificed women to please it, that demon would let him win the lottery and let him get away with murder. When he was apprehended by the police, they found that he had purchased several lottery tickets right before the killings. They also discovered a bunch of lottery tickets throughout his room. It's a really good thing the police caught Danielle when they did. He admitted his intentions to sacrifice six women every six months until he eventually won the Mega Million Super Jackpot. It's a tragedy that he even made it to two, but at least he didn't make it to six. Number 2. New York Strangler In 1993, a man in New York strangled a teenager to death with her own bra. She was just 17 years old, an innocent child who was murdered by the evil Joseph Belstadt. The tragedy occurred on the 19th of September when two witnesses saw Mandy Steingasser get in Joseph's car. It was the last time she was ever seen alive. One month later, her decomposed corpse was found in a ravine. She had been strangled to death, although she also showed signs of a skull fracture from being beaten. Police found DNA evidence in Joseph's car, but they couldn't actually identify the DNA belonging to Mandy. Not until 2017. It took 28 years for Joseph to be brought to justice, finally found guilty and sentenced to 25 years to life. When he was found guilty in court, Joseph denied it through his teeth. He said he didn't kill her, he would never have done such a thing, and that they got the wrong guy. Because of his denial, we never did get a proper confession or admission of guilt, or even a motive. We still don't know why he strangled a poor teenager with her own bra and then dumped her body. Number 1. Indiscriminate Evil Brianna Kupfer was the victim of indiscriminate evil. At 24 years old, Brianna was working at a luxury furniture store in Los Angeles. On January 13th, a man named Sean Laval Smith walked into Croft House where Brianna was doing a shift by herself. She had never seen this man before, but she didn't like the look of him. She messaged a friend and said a man was in the store making her feel uncomfortable. Moments later, Sean walked up and stabbed her. He then walked casually out of the store and went along with his business. It wasn't until about 20 minutes later that a customer came in off the street and found Brianna lying in a puddle of her own blood. Her killer was apprehended 15 miles away in Pasadena. He has since been charged with murder, but he never was able to come up with a logical motive. According to the police, it was a completely random killing. This guy woke up in the morning and decided he was going to stab someone to death. It doesn't get much more evil than that. Nine, William Hudson. In late 2015, Hannah Johnson and her boyfriend, Thomas Camp, took a family camping trip on some land they had recently bought in Tennessee County, Texas. They were joined by Thomas's two adult sons, Nathan and Austin, Hannah's parents, Carl and Cynthia, and her six-year-old son, Cade. Little did they know, the previous landowner, William Hudson, was angry that they had purchased the property, and he was waiting for the perfect moment to get his revenge. Hannah and her parents stayed behind at the campsite while the four other campers went to get some firewood. Hudson shot and killed them all, then tossed their bodies into a pond in his yard. He then went to the campsite where he fatally shot Hannah, then shot Carl and beat them to death. Hannah's mother, Cynthia, hid behind some chairs until dawn and then sought help. She was the only survivor. Cynthia testified in court that she could hear Carl asking Hudson why he was hurting them and saying that he thought they were friends. She heard the two fighting inside the camper, then watched terrified as Hudson came outside, vomited, and went near her hiding spot, 
making her think that she would be his next victim. Instead, he sat down and drank a beer, then went back inside and finished murdering Carl. Cynthia said that Hudson had been unpleasant but helpful toward the family during a previous encounter when they got their truck and camper stuck in the mud. He had also volunteered to help the first four victims collect firewood the night he murdered them. When the group that stayed behind heard gunfire, they assumed the men were just having fun. Little did they know Hudson was headed their way next. A jury found Hudson guilty of three counts of capital murder. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection. Eight, a decades-old double murder. David Schuldes and his fiancée, Ellen Matthews, were shot dead while camping in Silver Cliff, Wisconsin during the summer of 1976. The killer shot David in the neck before sexually assaulting Ellen and firing two bullets into the woman's chest. Sadly, the case went cold and remained unsolved for decades while police did their best to try figuring out who murdered the young couple. During the 1990s, investigators uploaded DNA evidence recovered from the scene to a law enforcement database called the Combined DNA Index System, or CODIS. Unfortunately, no matches turned up. In 2018, detectives revisited the case using a groundbreaking technique known as genetic genealogy, which involves identifying suspects through any DNA that their relatives have voluntarily submitted to a genealogy database. This enabled investigators to narrow down their pool of suspects to four brothers, whom they watched until they saw an opportunity to secretly collect DNA samples from. Raymond Van Neuwehoven was the third brother that the police visited. They pretended that they were doing a survey which they then asked him to fill out and place in a sealed envelope. The 82-year-old saliva turned out to be a genetic match to the killer. He was arrested in 2019, nearly 43 years after the murders. Van Neuwehoven maintained his innocence, but as far as the jury was concerned, DNA doesn't lie. He was convicted of killing David and Ellen and will spend the rest of his life behind bars. 7. A Fatal Family Gathering Nobody expected the night to end in bloodshed when Miles Jones accompanied his girlfriend to a family retreat at a Bucks County campground in 2019. But things quickly turned deadly when the couple got into an argument. The irate boyfriend was found trying to flip over his tent with his girlfriend inside while she screamed for help. He reportedly warned other partygoers that nobody was safe and that they were all going to pay. 41-year-old Eric Braxton and 46-year-old Arthur Hill intervened in an attempt to calm things down, but Jones decided to take the altercation to the next level. He pulled out a gun and fatally shot both men. Deputy District Attorney Edward Luca described the horrifying crime as two senseless killings that didn't have to happen and were completely unjustified. The defendant's attorney argued that Jones acted in self-defense after being beaten by other guests. He claimed that he was terrified for his life and had no way to get home from the unfamiliar place he was in, but his defense wasn't convincing enough to get him off the hook for his crimes. Jones was convicted of two counts of first-degree murder, 13 counts of reckless endangerment, carrying an unlicensed firearm, and possession of a crime instrument. Prosecutors originally sought the death penalty, but a judge sentenced him to two consecutive life terms. Six. Ryan O'Carroll. In 2018, a 25-year-old entrepreneur named Ryan O'Carroll decided to camp at Tahiti County Park in Cornwall, England. But the trip was over before it really even began, and it ended in the worst imaginable way. While setting up his tent, a tree came crashing down and crushed the young man to death in what can only be described as a tragic freak accident. He was securing the hammock-like shelter between two trees 
and put too much strain on one of them as he tightened the strap. Ryan's wife and brother were there to witness the disturbing tragedy. Horrified onlookers said that the tree looked a bit rotten, but it didn't look like it was going to fall. The accident happened during an especially dry season, leaving the tree without enough moisture and possibly dead. Natalie Jupp, who was nearby when the tree fell, told the Daily Mail that the severity of what happened needed to be highlighted, presumably to raise awareness about the potential dangers of camping in the type of tent that Ryan was using. 4. Sarah Collin Police in Conifer, Colorado responded to a report of a shooting late last year and found a man dead inside a camper. The suspect, 36-year-old Sarah Ann Collin, fled the scene in a pickup truck in the middle of the night, but police were quick to catch up with her. They charged her with first-degree murder, menacing, and for having a weapon in her possession as a previous offender. Colin indeed had numerous run-ins with the law before that night, with a criminal record dating back to 2003. In 2006, she was charged with two counts of attempted murder, menacing and firing a gun while drunk in Colorado Springs. She was convicted on two counts of assault with a deadly weapon and served a six-year prison sentence. Then in 2014, a judge sentenced Colin to two years of probation for felony menacing. But she couldn't seem to follow the rules and ended up spending 90 days in jail after having her probation revoked. She spent another 60 days in jail in 2017 for assault and resisting arrest. If Colin is convicted of the charges she currently faces, she will likely receive her longest prison sentence yet. 3. Russell Hill and Carol Clay 74-year-old Russell Hill was an experienced outdoorsman, so it was odd when he and his 73-year-old girlfriend, Carol Clay, never returned from a camping trip in Australia's Victorian Alps in 2020. Other campers found Hill's vehicle at the couple's burned-out campsite, but the pair were nowhere to be found. The investigation has been slow going, but police revealed late last year that they had found a crime scene and were hopeful that the missing couple's remains would turn up. It was around the same time that police arrested a 55-year-old pilot named Greg Lynn at a remote campsite. By then, the suspect had sold his trailer, which detectives believe could hold important clues about the victim's fates. After more than 20 months of investigating, Police found charred human remains that they believe belong to Hill and Clay. They are currently awaiting DNA testing results to confirm the identities of the deceased. It appears as though the killer burned the couple's bodies and then dumped them into a densely wooded area. Detectives are withholding a lot of the details about what else they found as the investigation continues. If convicted of the murders, Lynn could spend the rest of his life in prison. 2. Maria Madrid Maria Madrid was a 38-year-old mother who had migrated to the U.S. from Mexico when she was in her mid-20s. She settled down in Colorado with her husband, Eliseo, and had a son. As they prepared to go home after a picnic along the Colorado River in 2005, a man from a neighboring campsite accused them of not picking up their garbage. He pulled out a handgun and began shooting at their vehicle as Eliseo tried driving away. Maria died in the attack. A few days later, a concerned onlooker notified the Eagle County Sheriff's Office about a suspicious-looking man they had seen walking along the river who matched the description of the suspect in Maria's murder. Deputies arrested 55-year-old Charles Anthony Gross, who was living in a camper attached to his truck at the time. Maria had told her husband that the man gave her a bad feeling shortly before she was killed. The unemployed construction worker, who blamed immigrants for stealing his job, allegedly admitted to killing the woman in a fit of rage. A jury convicted Gross of murder in 2007 and he was sentenced to life plus 100 years. He's challenged his case numerous times and was even granted a new trial in 2010, but the charges stuck. 
Gross tried to get another new trial in 2017, claiming that his lawyers misrepresented him, but he remains behind bars for now. 1. The Cowden Family Murders Richard and Belinda Cowden vanished over Labor Day weekend in 1974 along with their kids, David and Melissa, during a family camping trip in Oregon's Siskiyou Mountains. The father and son were the last family members to be seen when they went to a general store to buy milk around 9 o'clock in the morning on September 1st. When the Cowdens failed to arrive at Belinda's mother's home for dinner later that day, she went to their campsite to see if everything was okay. All their belongings were there, but the family was nowhere to be found. Belinda's mother panicked and went to the police, but because there were no outward signs of violence, they held off on starting an investigation until the next day. The following morning, the family's dog showed up at the general store. The Cowden's disappearance sparked one of the largest search efforts in the state's history, as the baffling case made national headlines. Seven months later, a pair of gold prospectors found their remains roughly seven miles from the campsite. Belinda and David had died from gunshot wounds to the head, and Melissa died from severe head trauma. Richard's cause of death is unknown, but detectives believe that he died at the site along with his family. No murder weapon was ever found. Serial rapist and murderer Dwayne Lee Little remains a top suspect to this day, but he was never charged in the Cowden family's deaths. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about camping trips gone wrong, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.